Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, back with another video. Um, so this video is going to be about my brother's car. Um, I have some footage that I recorded whenever we took it to PFI speed to get dynoed. And what happened is whenever we took it to the dyno, um, the first couple pulls felt, uh, we felt like, you know, it was making really low power. Um, in which I'll attach these videos to this video. That way you guys can kind of see what happened. But the tuner basically said that he kind of felt a little bit of resistance in the motor. And um, after a couple pulls, whenever the motor would go back down to idle, the oil pressure light would come on. <clears throat> um, we didn't have an oil pressure gauge mounted into the car. So we weren't really sure what the oil pressure was. So that's kind of our fault. You know, we probably could have caught this before we even got on the dyno. Um, but anyways... What had happened was um, we ended up taking the motor apart. We ended up canceling the dyno session, taking the motor apart, brought it back to my brother's house, tore it apart, and on the oil cooler, the oil passages and whatnot were all really gummed up and sludged up. And what we believe happened is that maybe um, the sludge and everything really restricted the oil flow throughout the engine and possibly starved the oil pump of oil. Um, upon Upon further uh, inspection, we did find that there was significant wear on the rod bearings um, and that the oil pump had actually failed. Um, so anyways, my brother decided that he wanted to go ahead and just do a full rebuild. We got everything needed. Uh, we got new pistons and rods, uh, scat, I think it's uh, scat rods, H-beam rods. And YCP pistons, I believe, which is like a stronger cast form of a turbo piston uh, or a stronger cast form of the OEM piston. So, a lot of people run these on like boosted setups or budget boosted setups. Um, so, we went ahead, we got those. Um, and while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and install uh, skunk, skunk 2 stage 2 cams along with. Supertech uh, titanium valve springs and retainer, titanium springs and retainers. Um, got the the uh, head rebuilt completely with those, so it's already ready to be slapped onto the car. So I'll be kind of doing a video showing you guys how to like gap piston rings and whatnot. We set the block out <clears throat> to get hot tanked, um, so that way it kind of remove that way it would remove any of like residue or sludge buildup inside the engine and oil passages. So. That's all done. Block is uh, ready to go. We also got the cylinder uh, walls already honed. And yeah, so I'm on my way out to his house now. And what I'm going to be doing tonight is, like I said, I'll be showing you guys how to uh, gap the pistons, install those, and then show you how to um, use a plastic gauge to measure the clearances between the rod bearings and the crank. Um, yeah, so it should be a pretty fun video. Like I said, I'll install the videos of the dyno session um, that we had at PFI speed so you guys kind of see what happened. Um, anyways, guys, so just stay tuned with me. Um, and yeah, give this video a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe. And yeah, let's get the ball rolling. <laughs> You said you got the water pump on? Got the water pump on today. And I repainted the Painted the block, neck, looks good. Painted the block. Put all my hoses on. Flushed out the hoses. And it's all honed now? <laughs> all the 
All the cylinders have been honed out with the 60 degree hatch in it. Um, reinstalled my oil squirters today. Put my plug in for my balance shaft elite. Can't really see it because it's way down there in the hole. It's dark. <clears throat> and yeah, that's about it. That's all I've done. Bird. So these are the pistons. So these are nip on pistons. It's like a stronger stronger cast form of like an OE piston. So they're coated on the sides and then I guess the process that they go through and the way that they cast them makes them a little bit stronger. Like I said, I just watched a video of a guy doing a dyno and he ran like, he, he put 570 horse down on 18 pounds. So I know they can hold some boost. Yeah, my rods are right there. They're Where? all balanced. Where's your rod? Oh, right there. the scat the, rods? If you look on the side of the box, it shows you the weight for the big end and the small end. Already balanced. And you got ARP hardware? We're doing all this inside because it's. We don't have a garage. And it's cleaner inside. It's kind of nicer because we can like watch TV and watch yeah, Netflix and that's what I'm saying. you know. Oh shit! We got let's so get the H beams. I mean, these should be these are forged, so these will handle a pretty good amount of power. Oh yeah. Yeah, they should be pretty good. I bet you they're good for up to 700. I really yeah. I mean, they're forged H beams. I mean, shit, they should handle. Every bit of 700, it's just the pistons that would be the limiting factor, but like I said, I just watched a dyno video today and somebody put down 570, so, I mean, even if you did, like, even if you did put down, like, 500, I mean, fuck, even, I mean, by then, you, that's a lot, at least before you go, if you go forge pistons, but it's not a bad way just to rebuild it. Oh, yeah, your cylinder head's all done? Dang, look at that. Nice and fresh. Dang. That fucking paint job, Dan, you got handy. After you, you shred some bearings and all the oil goes through everything in your motor, you're oh, yeah. basically just replacing everything. So. Well, that's good that you hot tanked it. And everything's been hot tanked, the head and the block. So you said it was, you said it was... Like all in your oil cooler and shit, like it yep. was all sledged up. Yep. When I uh, so when that's I, probably when what I took, happened. When then. I took these lines off, right here, the necks that are coming out of the oil cooler were completely filled with sludge. I had to dig it out with a fucking flathead screwdriver, and I think that's what, probably what I happened. Think, I think what happened is my engine oil yeah. ended up getting so hot that it ended up just spinning both of the bearings because the bearings were starting to seize from well, either, overheating. Well, either that, like, what could have happened is, like, when it was sitting there, and like, before we put it, we didn't really flush the oil a whole lot either when we put it in. And poor circulation of coolant throughout the engine block will also cause overheating. And the car was stolen at one time, and I don't know how the hell the people yeah, drove like, it. Yeah, whenever they stole their fucking so. banging gears and fucking hitting red line, <laughs> who knows. So, yeah, and then my dope-ass valve cover that I painted at work because, you yeah, know. Yeah, looks good, dude. Perks of the job. Came out pretty good. Yeah, nice spark plug cover matches <laughs> your VTEC solenoid. Spark plug cover I painted. Decided to keep the OEM Honda thing because I like the OEM shit. <laughs> so, yeah. Shit up, man. <laughs> shit talking. bastard cool <laughs> right on sweet well i guess we start by doing the rings and then you know get those make sure they're all within spec and then assemble some piston and rods throw them in there and then <clears throat> <clears throat> yep and what are you measuring your bearing clearance with all right you uh got... my the feeler gauges that are right here so what? These are just the two feeler gauges that oh, I'll plastic be using. Gauge? Plastic gauges that I have. Sweet. 
So yeah, sorry, it's kind of a mess, but hey, you're building a motor, you ain't cleaning house. Yeah, fuck, dude, fucking mess. Word. Dope. Well, let's get to it. There you go. All right, so we're starting to put the pistons and everything on the rods. What we want to do first of all, make sure that the ring gap and everything is good. This is the bottom ring. I already kind of did one piston, but I'm just going to kind of show you guys like how we got the ring. What you want to do is you want to start with your cylinder. You want to take your ring, kind of put it in there a little bit, and then you're going to grab your piston. You're just going to take a piston and kind of put it down in the bore. Perform a couple of tests for me, okay? Push it down in there really good. The service manual calls for about a half inch from the bottom. So I'm going to push it down in there really well. Put your piston back out. If you look, it's going to seat it down there. And according to the service manual, we want to be between 24 thousandths and 30 thousandths. So i got a set of feeler gauges here. And I'm just going to find my feeler gauge. Let's see. Sample, okay? We're just going to go for 30 to make sure it's even under there, just for demonstrational purposes. So I'm just going to kind of put it in there, and if you look real closely in that board, there's a little gap on that piston ring. Right there, that ring, or that gap right there is where we're going to measure with the feeler gauge. So we want to make sure that this gauge does not go in, which it doesn't, so that's good. Now I'm just going to kind of drop it down. <laughs> what do you think was gonna happen? I don't know. Like up in this bitch. You go ahead and just step up a little bit and spread your feet. Apart. It's gonna go down to like uh, twenty-five thousand. So, is there a reason why you have all these breath mints in your pocket? <laughs> All right, and so that kind of goes in. So we know we're within spec, anyways, under thirty thousand. So that would be considered a good piston ring. And <laughs> so what we're gonna do is pull the ring back out, and then this ring is only good for that one piston that we're measuring the clearances on. So that's gonna be taken care of that for that cylinder. So kind of fast forward a little bit now. We got the other piston done and measured, and. So we got the wrist pin put in with the seat clips in, and we got all the oil rings um, spaced out. The service manual calls for 15 degrees um, for the bottom oil ring, for the middle spacer gap, and then for the top oil ring all within one section. And then we got the top ring um, 90 degrees uh, away facing from the bottom ring. So. This is all good to go. Now what we're going to do is going to go ahead and put the piston ring compressor on. And then we're going to lube up the cylinder walls here. And then go ahead and put this piston in. Alright, so we got the cylinder walls lubed up. We're just going to take this piston. Kind of push it in there. Get it kind of right there. And then this is where I'm, I'm going to hold it from the bottom real quick. I'm going to hold the bottom of the rod so it doesn't fall all the way through and we're just going to put the compressor on. Tighten it up. Make sure it's flush. So we're going to kind of get the hammer and then if you can see... We're going to kind of make sure it's all flush on the cylinder head. Just so that way whenever you push down and the rings expand, it doesn't catch the lip and then prevent the piston from going down. It took us a couple tries to do the other one in there. Um, put that out of the way. Okay, and then once it's all lined up, we said to double check, make sure it's flush again. Police officer stopping it. Oh, fuck, you gotta rotate that. Now, this is a business area. Of Make sure it's all kind of centered up, and then this might take a couple tries, but once we can get lucky and do it on the first time, you just tighten the hell out of it. Yeah. Okay. You just kind of tap it on in there, get a little tappy. There we go. Alright, see, just like that. Beautiful, first try. Alright, so now that piston's in there, we're gonna work our way over. 
flip it around and then go ahead and then put the crank and stuff in. I'll show you guys how we're gonna measure our bearings for the rod bearings and stuff. All right, so what we're using to measure the clearances between uh, the main bearings and the rod bearings once we get the other rods in, of course, because someone, fuck, brother fucked up someone fucked up gaps. and uh, on the piston ring gaps. And uh, anyways, so what we're using is uh, this stuff here. It's called plastic gauge. What I did, or what's in here, is a little strip of plastic. If I can show you guys, just a little strip of plastic. If you can see that little green mark right there, that's a little strip of plastic. Anyways, uh, what you do is you rip a couple pieces off and you put one on the main bearings. One, two, three, four, and five. And you just put a little piece right there on top. And then what we did now is we're gonna put the girdle on, which. Uh, the girdle actually um, has the main bearings um, on that side, and then once we torque it all down, um, what, the, what it's going to do is that little piece of plastic is going to smush, and basically what we're going to do is measure the smush. And the way we do that is we take this little strip here. Let me see if I can focus. So we're going to take this little strip here, and depending on how much it's it smushed out, um, we're going to use this piece of paper. And that'll kind of uh, tell us what we're at as far as clearances go. Um, I can't remember what the service manual said as far as clearances go. Anyways, I'll get to that when I take the girdle back off after we torque it and torque it down and everything. Pull it back off, and then we'll see what the clearances are and uh, kind of go from there. Make sure everything's good. Plastic gauge all laid out. There, there, and there. I'm gonna put the girdle on. tap. Okay. There's a hammer you were talking about. <laughs> At least it's a rubber mallet, not Max. Very true. That looks like that works a little better. Alright. We're gonna try a different torque wrench too. Cause that one like <laughs> that one that one like will work. It's just it's hard, it's hard. It's hard to get each bolt the same exact foot pounds because it's like you know, because it's got like the little arrow in it. Yeah. That's so yeah, it's, dude, like, it's Josh's torque wrench. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm laughing. <laughs> I ain't dissing on your torque wrench, bro. It works. I mean, but this one. Put my camera down for a second. All right. Sorry, how you said it was worse. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Oh yeah, dude, I know. I got this one. My grandpa has like three or four of those. Yeah, as long as it's a good one. Yeah. It's not Harbor Freight. Oh no, it's O'Reilly Special. It works though. I mean, shit. Put all the rod bolts in. Rod bolts, girdle bolts. Put all the girdle bolts in. Tighten her down.
And then I'll torque down the spec, pull the girdle off, and then measure our clearances. And we did untorque them in the correct order before we did this, so before I get a lot of haters in the comments. is gonna be a pain in the ass. Just pulling this girdle back off. This girdle's like this just they like to seat in there really well. Me and him had to pull up on it and like me and him are struggling to get it off. Yeah give it a couple love taps. We actually we pried it off. We took the hammer and put it in there. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's going. Alright, so that's what you want to see. Well, that's okay. Well, no, all the mains stayed on there. There we go. Yeah, a couple pieces left. So that's exactly what you want to see. Is that smush right there? What you do is you take this paper here, flip it the right way. And we want to be around 15 to 16 thousandths. So there's our 15 thousands mark. We're gonna kind of put it right there. Look at that. Smack dab. Exactly where we want it. So that looks good. Kind of hard to see, but look at that. That's about 15 thousandths. And then moving on to the next one. Right at fifteen thousandths. One's right at, that one's right at fifteen thousandths. And that one's right at fifteen thousandths. Yep, that's what you want. Perfect. So the main bearings are within spec, and then now what we're gonna do <laughs> Hell yeah. So now what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead <clears throat> and then do the rods, and then after we do the rods, we'll go ahead and Lube everything up again and final torque it and assemble it, and then that'll be it. And then, yeah, we still gotta drop in those two pistons too before we do the rods, so that'll be next. We'll put those other two pistons together and then throw it in the block.
All right, so we measured all the clearances on the rod bearings. Everything measured out good. Now what we're doing is just torquing them down for the final time. Got everything all lubed up. <clears throat> we're gonna torque these down and then uh, spin it over. And... What are these torquing down to again? 70. So 70 foot pounds for the ARP uh, rod bolts for the scat rods is what they go. So we're torquing down to 70 and then uh, after that, we'll be done with that. We'll put the girdle back on and torque those down to spec, and that'll complete that. So everything looked really good. Everything was about 15 thousandths, um, so it's between the, the service uh, recommendations. So we are all gravy. And like I said, after we're all done, we'll go ahead and uh, flip the motor over and then spin it over, see how nice it's, it spins, and uh, we'll call it a night. Because it's 11.30, and I'm tired, and I gotta work in the morning.